Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Manny Pacheco enjoying an afternoon with the authors, and we have one here, Mark Wanamaker, who is part of Hollywood Heritage, one of the founders, in fact, with his latest book, Hollywood Trains and Trolleys. How you doing, Mark? Very good. Wonderful day. Boy, you talk about some great memories. How about the Angel Flight and all the trolleys that used to go up and down uh, all the major streets in Los Angeles? What made you write the book? Well, I was asked by the Los Angeles Heritage Railroad Foundation to do this book. They wanted me to do a book on Hollywood and the trains and trolleys, right? So I, I wrote a manuscript for them of what locomotives and what trolleys were and what films and, and gave it to them and they called me and said, wait a minute, no, 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 this is not what we want. There's already two books. This other guy named Jessen who writes these books on what locomotive was and what film. We want to make this broader, a broader interest to the general public. So what does that mean? We want a history of the transportation industry in Southern California and how the movie industry intertwined with that. And I went, oh my gosh, that's going to be interesting to write. It took a couple of years to put this together. And basically, it's uh, the movement is the whole idea of films, right? Well, railroads and trolleys was movement. And that's how they intertwine them. They use them in the films. They actually use them for transportation. They use them as stars in the films. In other words, jumping off of or being rolled over or whatever. So in other words, since the earliest days in 1898, with the Biograph Company mounting a camera on the front of a locomotive. So when you're in the theater, and remember before that, in the 19th century, you're sitting in a theater and the train is coming right at you? My gosh, it was like now. It's like, you know, IMAX or some strange thing. It was, it was such a novelty. So railroads and trolleys really had a, a very important developmental part of the history of the film industry in general and Southern California, Los Angeles. Wow, look at that. That's just wonderful. I'll hold it still. Very dramatic, the smoke and everything. Extreme. But look at the film crew on top. Oh, my gosh. There's a film crew standing on top of the locomotive as it's going with the smoke coming out. If that isn't dramatic behind the scenes, I don't know what is. And there's all sorts of pictures in here. So it's a picture book. It's a picture book with lots of history in here, too. Sure. And here she is on top of the of the uh, That's rolling train ready to be jumping off and they did not have green screens, blue screens or anything of the type. They actually jumped off the train <laughs> somehow. I'm thinking, you know, back to the early days with the Lumiere brothers, but also through film noir, Hitchcock using trains a lot, yes. and even as current as La La Land when they were up yes. on Angel's Flight. Yes. So you, you're talking about a broad swath of history. Exactly. I, I mean, people don't realize that all these uh, uh, transportation systems were all intricately uh, put into the films as subjects, you know, of the film itself or as a star. You know, this locomotive is a star of the film with the actors and or just for transportation. In the early days here, a lot of people did not have cars. The studios were built really mostly on transportation grid of Los Angeles, which is in the book. I have a map that shows it. And uh, all the workers, everyone took the trolley car to work. Now, why the get up? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm dressed as a Westerner because uh, for many reasons. Uh, first of all, the Hollywood Heritage Museum, right behind us, right here, was a horse barn in Hollywood. It was part of the old Western times of Hollywood, 1902. So when the early filmmakers came here, starting in 1908, 1909, uh, they came to make Western films. This was the very beginning of the film industry. It was mostly Westerns. Now, East Coast, it was less of that. It was more, you know, dramas and serials and this and that. But the Western film was a staple in everything that the film industry had made as an underlying way of making money to build these studios because they would make other films. But the Westerns was a regular thing that everybody loved. And it goes back to the days of 1903 with the Edison Film Company, the Great Train Robbery, and how the first star, George Barnes, pulled his gun out and pointed it straight at the audience and pulls the trigger, which people were jumping and hiding and all this. So this tradition has gone on. Now the Bison Film Company, which I named my archives after, was the first company to start the B-Westerns. It was in 1909 
with Art Accord. They had a white horse. Remember, the, the Westerns, a lot of them had white horses, mostly. There's about 11 major stars that had white horses. Silver, you know, Lone Ranger, Hopalong Cassidy, and many others, okay, white horse. Well, the first one was Snowball that Fred Balshofer, who was the, the manager of Bison, so it show, they're showing Snowball off as a star. I have stills of them holding it, he's, he's re you know, rearing up, all this stuff. This is 1909 we're talking. <laughs> and then Thomas Ince, which I am the biographer of Thomas Ince, started with the, took the Bison Company and made it into the, the Thomas Ince Inceville and made it into KB films and Bronco films, making real wild Indian and, and cowboy films uh, in, starting in 1911. 1911, using the Wild West shows uh, stars and performers in the films. So I'm the biographer of all this kind of thing. So my persona is the Squaw Man is the first film that Cecil B. DeMille made for Paramount. I mean, it wasn't Paramount yet, 1913, here at the barn. And then after that was The Virginian. After that was, uh, was uh, Rose of the Rancho. I mean, on and on and on, Western, Western, Western. So I'm wearing my Western outfit as a symbol of the early days of Hollywood filmmaking. Mark Wanamaker is the cowpoke and the dude here at Hollywood Heritage Afternoon with the Authors. I'm Manny Pacheco for Celebrating Act Two. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.